So, made it out to, I think, 94, right here at Michigan City, uh, Indiana, to the Bass Pro Shops. And a uh, misfire, random misfire come in, and truck started jumping and jerking, and uh, single owner's manual, 171 miles to speed reduced and all that stuff, check engine light, and pretty much all that, you know. Got the all tail out, and I've already scanned it, but I'm gonna scan it again for you guys to see. Like I say, I've replaced a few of the injector connectors on here, and whenever those codes come up, it's usually a P020, and then a number. That last number indicates what cylinder it is, like P0207 would be the number seven injector connector, in my experience so far. But, I've already replaced the number seven injector connector and this is the code that came up this time and it says cylinder seven injector injection timing now I've only had this happen one other time and it was the injector itself the truck has was going to turn 400,000 miles on this trip the odometer won't come up while that's going on but it's got 390 something thousand by the time I get back from Washington, it'll have 400,000 on it, and I've never replaced an injector, so I found one right down the road, um, and I'm gonna go pick it up and come back and get her put in. First thing you need when you're changing an injector, make sure you got a good cut off with it. Nah, I'm messing with you. We're gonna have a technical difficulty. We'll be right back. Doing the number seven injector. I've only done a number three on one of these trucks. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is I jacked it up to spread the suspension out, get under the frame, and jack it up. That way you get more room right here because I'm a big guy and I'm going to have to fit in here. All right. Next thing, there's about 14 bolts that go around right here. And they are, they're torques. I can't remember, but there's about 14 of them. And I can't read that, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Get the inner fender liner out and then... I had one of the bolts that had uh, stripped out, so I had to I had to grind, cut it, cut the head off. These things have been out quite a few times. I'm gonna find some new bolts, but uh, yeah, they're pretty pretty easy to get out. But one of these things makes it a whole lot better if you've got something like this. If not, you'll be here all day twisting the crank. But anyway. There's the inner fender liner out. And then the next thing I'm going to do, there is a 10 millimeter bolt right here that takes this plastic cover off. I'm going to go ahead and get this off. I'm not going to worry about the front side because it stays. Number seven is the very back injector on the, pa in the, on the passenger side. So next thing we're going to do is pull this bolt out and get this plastic cover off. That's the only thing that holds it. So now I got that bolt loose, I'm not gonna take it out. You can lift this up. This is the same way you go in to do the injector connector and you just wiggle this and it'll pop right out. You can see my number five, number seven replacement injector connectors right there. Next thing, these things, the little clips are a pain in the butt. They will break. So I'm gonna put the camera down and use both hands. It's this back one is number seven and try to get this loose without breaking it. And then I will be back. All right, so you wiggle this little red clip back. You see it's in all the way back position. Push this down and you may have to take a screwdriver and push against the front of it and it will pop right out. There's that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is the, try to get at the fuel lines, this one and this one. And then this right here will be our hold down bolt. I will take it out after I get the fuel lines loose. What I've done is this nut right here, there's a nut right here on this high pressure line right here and right here. I have loosened both of these 17 millimeter and they're kind of a booger to get at, but they are both loose. This one is completely out. You're supposed to change that line anytime you take it, you change the injector, but nobody had one. Thanks to that part shortage. So I'm gonna go ahead and Next thing I got is to pull this loose and hopefully I can manipulate this line out of the way without breaking it. If I break it, that's gonna be really, really bad. They're brass washers, 
your top and bottom once again couldn't get them so I'm gonna have to try to reuse those and then this here is the injector hold down bolt we'll take this out and then we'll try to pop that guy out so if you're in the position that I'm in when you get that bolt out of the um, when you get that out of the injector be very very careful with that brass washer because like I say I don't have a choice but to reuse it now whenever you lift it up there's another brass washer under there I haven't touched it yet I didn't want to disturb it I will get it when I have to move the line next thing is this hold down right here yes I did go ahead and break it loose This is what holds the injector in. Okay, so now that I've got that out of the way, there are people that say, flip that back around and put it back in the hole and you can use that to pop the injector out. I didn't have any luck with that the first time. We may be trying it again though. You guys see how I have turned this around and put it back up in the hole? I do not know if that's correct. I don't know any good thing about that, but I do know I'm about to hit it and see what happens. So, cross your fingers for me. Injector's out. I saw it jump up. Now, like I say, I've got to be very careful about that line. And I'm also trying to not disturb that washer. So, I'll pull the hold down back out before you go too far. So this little guy right here with almost 400,000 miles on it is the pain in my <clears throat> butt today. And that's all there is to get him out. Now, I want to mention this many times I can. These numbers on top are very important. So I need to get a picture of those numbers of the new injector so I can program the flow rate when I get it put in. Here's the new one. This is a good one. And here's the bad one. There is a $150 core charge on the, the old one when you take it out. So keep that in mind if you need to get one. Um, if you haven't in changed your injector connector yet, what I was showing you under the truck earlier, change it to as many as you can get to while you're in there, especially the injector that you're changing. Um, if it does not have an injector timing, code in it if it's just a p0204 i would not go through all this i would just replace the connector first and i'm gonna find something to slick this up with and we're gonna shove that back in the hole and just in case we didn't tell you guys we are here at the bass pro shops and uh i can't portage indiana i think so this little o-ring right here i'm worried about it because when i push it down through there i do not want anything to cut that o-ring so I like using Dalton dishwashing detergent. That is my go-to, is Dalton dishwashing detergent, but I don't have it, so WD-40 is going to have to be a good substitute. And I'm just soaking it. I want it as soft as it can be when it goes in. But you don't want to get it into any of these holes right here. So just on lowering. So that should be good. And because my hands are all grimy and two of us can't fit, I'm going to slip this clock it right to where this will face the fuel line that we just took off. This faces the electrical connection we just took off and I'm going to slip it back down the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and put this fuel line on even though I know the injector is not set because I don't I want it to go as straight as it can I want to make sure that I'm not pulling it in an angle so I don't want it tight tight but I want it snug and then We'll leave this in 
until we get the injector hold down back in because it'll be super super hard for me to get up get a position on this rock and force it on down in there and it does have to go just a little bit on that very very light taps okay so the injector is set back in the hole and there's the hole for the hold down and I actually dropped it down into the mysterious never earlier and it took a minute to find all that but I am not sure that it's set but I am pretty fair certain that it's set far enough if I can get the keeper on it when I tighten the bolt up it will pull it into place And now I know I'm not the only one doing these injectors, so if there are other videos, if there are, uh, this is the first injector in this truck though, but if there's other videos or other folks that showing other tricks and tips and stuff on how to do this, uh, please put a link in the description in the comments because I'm new at this myself and I just make these videos trying to help y'all out or help me out later because I was gonna go back and watch where I did a number three on that other truck before I did this one. So I'm gonna put the battery ratchet on this one and pull it on down. So it is going down. And I will get a regular ratchet and torque that in a minute. I do not know, remember the torque specs. I think they were in the one where I did the number three a long time ago on someone else's truck but I feel pretty happy with that I've already got the high pressure line on so it should be all lined up I snug the line up I did not tighten the line up hoping that it pulled the flared ends right back to where they're supposed to be and yeah now the next thing I'm gonna try to put this metal line back on because I did not like bending it at all if that metal line breaks I'm in trouble I'm gonna go ahead and the copper washer is on the bottom. I can see it. I'm trying not to disturb it any more than I have to. And I pulled the plug out. And now And I know this one, that you do not want to over tighten it. For dang sure. But I'm gonna run it down hand tight, and there it is. I feel a whole lot better about that. If this would have been number five, or number any other one, all this stuff forward would have had to come off so I could get that line out of the way, to the best of my understanding. So I'm gonna snug this up, I'm gonna snug this up, and snug these two lines right here up and plug it in we'll be pretty well done except for programming all right guys so on this we have snugged up that big nut in the back we snug barely snug this one up and we tightened the injector hold down bolt and we tightened the nut up on the high pressure line right there at the top of the rail and all I got left to do now is program it and test fire it. So these are the connect connectors I was talking about. I replaced this one and this one. I know they look kind of shoddy, but they're covered up. And they do have a really good connection. So, And if you're replacing one of these and you need to know, they're not polarity sensitive. So you can hook the wires however you want them. Whatever's easier. I'm going to fire it up and see if anything comes out. You want to try it? Yeah. I think you can fire it up without programming it and then we'll shut it off and do it. So. It will take a minute because it did lose its prime when I put the injector loose. The truck did run, check engine light went off, and it didn't run smooth. 
I wasn't happy with that. So we're going to go ahead and pro program the flow rate on the injector. Um, what we thought was a leak a while ago was the air conditioning. And anyway, it's service, injector, GM. Uh, automatic detection will be getting your VIN. Read the VIN. I'm going to turn the camera away for just a minute. There's my VIN. Okay. And it says this for a minute, and then the VIN pops back up again. I hit yes. And come back down here, and it says hot functions. Engine control module. Injector flow rate programming. Injector number seven. And when it comes up, this big long number right here needs to be edited. That's the old flow rate. We're going to hit edit. And then I'm going to keep the F7. Always keep the F7. So, let's see. Got my keyboard up. My fingers all in the way. All right, guys, so we got the whole flow rate put in, and it is a set of numbers. It's on the actual plug, not on the body. So I'll leave a uh, diagram of what I'm talking about in this video. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit done. Okay. Vehicle settings, setting changes right options so here's all your different injector flow rates injector number seven this is the new one that we just changed into it so now we hit continue exiting procedure now the injector should be programmed and also now when I started up there should not be a check engine light so I'm gonna cut it off check engine light seems to be running smooth I'm gonna go check for leaks let the air conditioner run for a minute it's hot 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 and then I will get back with you as I start putting things back together checking for leaks I just want to look right here to make sure I don't see anything from right there and or coming out up here if that other line was and I will be checking periodically to make sure nothing's wet over here too, but I think we got it. That's the grips he saw earlier, and we wanted to shut it off just to double check and make sure. So, big call. And also, I don't see anything coming from up here. Everything looks dry. Maybe we can get ahead to Washington now. When you get it, getting ready to put it back in, just tip it up like that and it should slip right up under the bolt is all in the way right up under just like so and snap into place and then just tighten this down with a 10 millimeter and guys it's really hot i'm not gonna bore you guys with putting the inner fender liner back in it's just a bunch of torx bits i did have to cut this bolt out a while ago that's why i was done with the grinder uh and the head was stripped out so i'm gonna knock that off and get back on the road i'll see you in a few minutes All right, so there's sometimes you can be wrong and it's okay. There's sometimes you can be wrong and, you know. So I was wrong on the injector, or I think I was wrong on the injector, but I do know now, I do strongly feel now like there's an injector connector bad too because the P0207, and it just straight up, it's either that or I feel like I got a bad injector because it's still showing the same codes but I never saw the injector timing without it being an injector. So maybe it was the injector and the connector failed both at the same time. So luckily I have a connector. I'm gonna dig it out and we're gonna put it on. So here's the new connector that I just put on the new injector. 
and it was loose. That is not my best cramp job, but I did pull really hard against them to make sure they wouldn't come out. Uh, the other one hadn't lost its cramp, so I've had people ask me how long do these last. That's the first one that I've ever replaced, and I don't know how long it'll last. I don't know if that fixed the problem or not, but I put the uh, trucking gear, turn the stability track off, and mashed on it, and it's smooth as silk, about twisted, twisted a drive shaft out of it, so um, we're going to get back on the road and see what happens. I'll put all this back together again. If you're looking for a video on putting a number seven injector connector on, there's one from a long time ago, 200,000 miles ago, where I did this, and I'll try to link it in the description. That was on Monday. Today is Sunday, over 2,000 miles later. Um, everything's going good. I do believe I wasted my money on the injector, and it was only the injector connector, but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I'll leave a link for the injector connectors on Amazon just because you can get them cheaper on Amazon and uh, or I feel I can get them cheaper on Amazon they come in the GM original packaging and I think we're all fixed up to the next injector connector goes bad and shame on GM for not doing a recall or something on this but I do still love my truck so if that's the only issues I'm gonna have is what it is and that was dragging this big massive I don't know how well you can see it but 39 foot uh, triaxle fifth wheel with a 20,000 pound GVWR all the way to Washington through the mountains and stuff and it has done a really really good job so anyway I hope this helps one of you guys out if you have a, if, you, if there's other videos of injectors being replaced or anything with these trucks that might help me out feel free to leave it in the comments I'd appreciate it and like share and subscribe I'll see you in the next video